He's also telling you, I'm not going to let you miss your blessing. Amen. Turn to somebody and tell them, don't miss your blessing. Yeah, and God will let you see the promise from afar off. He'll let you see your blessing from afar off. He'll let you see your, your place of destiny from far off. But you got to keep your head up. Instead of keeping your head up and, and making sure that you're on course and on track so that I can do what God called me to do. I get off track because I lost sight of what God said. What I'm saying is you have the authority in spite of what you see to be able to see something else. that scripture, verse number eight is God will provide. Somebody shout God will provide. God will provide. See at the next level, amen, it requires me to have a total trust and dependency that God will, God will provide. Come on, shout the next level. The next level is the answer prayer and the fulfilled promise. Amen. Come on, will you bless the Lord with me today? Come on. Come on, give God your very best. Come on, give him your very best praise. Come on, come on, come on. If you know him as a healer, give him your very best. If you know him as a way maker, give him your very best. If he is your provision, give him your very best best. If he's a lover of your soul, give him your very best. If he's made a way out of no way, come on, give him. Hallelujah. Come on, give him your very, your very best. Thank you. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. We give honor to God uh, today to his son, uh, Jesus to the power and the presence of the Spirit of God in this place, giving honor to uh, my co-labors in the gospel, Amen. Amen. Uh, to uh, Amen. the leadership of this house, to Amen. our honorees uh, yes. this afternoon, to uh, my beloved brother, Bishop uh, Dowdy, give him a hand praise. And to his to his beautiful bride, my sister, Sister LaShawn, God will be out of you today. God bless you. Uh, certainly to, uh, to their children uh, who I admire, amen, and love dearly. Uh, giving honor to, uh, to the leadership uh, in the form and fashion of the legacy of to Mud and Dad today, we honor you today. Amen. God bless you too much. Amen. Amen. To all of you today, we greet you with the salutation. Peace be unto the house of God. Amen. Amen. We are just glad uh, to be in the house one more time. Uh, amen. How many of us know that we can't take uh, today for granted? Amen. 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 I'm a living witness, uh, amen. I'm a living and walking testimony, Come on. Uh, amen, that God is both healer and deliverer, Come on. Uh, amen. It was uh, just this past August of this last year that I was uh, laying in the hospital for eight days, oh, Lord. Uh, amen, with COVID, oh, Lord. Uh, amen, and the doctor had uh, had no promise of whether I would or would not come out. Um, but how many of us know that he's a healer? Yes, he is. Yes, he is. I, I see none of y'all been sick. Um, but I'm, I'm not ashamed. I'm not ashamed of the fact that he's a healer. Amen. He's a healer. Amen. And I don't, I don't, uh, uh, I certainly don't tell anybody how to praise God, but one thing I can assure you is that the rocks will not cry out for me. Amen. And uh, Amen. Gotcha. everywhere that I go, gotcha. I will tell the world that I found a savior. Amen. I was sharing, let me share this very briefly. Uh, amen, because I'm, I'm just grateful. Um, I don't know how many uh, of you uh, have been delivered, uh, but I got delivered from people a long time ago. Amen. And so, and uh, 
So what people think don't, don't impact me. Uh, uh, but I'm grateful. I, I lost my, in January of this year, I lost both uh, my eldest brother and my mother in the gospel on the same morning. Two separate phone calls uh, to tell me that God made two different decisions at the same time. Okay. Okay. And it wasn't until several months later that I woke up one morning and looked at myself in the mirror and discovered I was not okay. But the songwriter said late in the midnight hour that God can turn it around. And I'm grateful for a turnaround today because the only reason why I'm able to stand here is because God touched me and picked me up when I almost couldn't pick my head up off the pillow. Somebody talked to me. Somebody turned to somebody and tell them thank you. We're not going to uh, be before you long uh, today. Again, we're just grateful to uh, be able to celebrate uh, these great leaders and to, uh, by way of the word of God, uh, be able to encourage them uh, one more time. We've been, uh, we have been doing this and uh, we were talking over the last few days that I've been here. Okay. And I thank God for uh, uh, friendship and yes. kinship yes. and brotherhood. Yes. And, uh, and we have been together for a lot of years. Amen. Uh, and so uh, by way of assignment today, if you all will pray with me, I ask if you would go to the book of the beginnings in the book of Genesis in the 22nd chapter, Genesis in the 22nd uh, chapter, I'm going to read verses 1 through 12 for your hearing today. Genesis in the 22nd chapter, I'm going to read verses 1 uh, through 12. If you would today, uh, if you would stand with me as we read from uh, the word of God, Genesis in the 22nd chapter, starting at verse number one. When you have it, let me hear you say amen. 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 If you need more time, just shout out Bible study. <laughs> Genesis in the 22nd chapter, starting at verse number one, the Bible records his word. And it came to pass after these things. That God did tempt Abraham and said unto him, Abraham, and he said, behold, here am I. Okay. And he said, take now thy son, thy only son, Isaac, whom thou lovest, and get thee into the land of Moab, or Moriah. And offer him therefore a burnt offering unto one of the mountains which I will tell thee of. Uh. And Abraham rose up early in the morning and saddled an ass and took two of his young men with him and Isaac his son and clave the wood for the burnt offering and rose up and went unto the place of which God had told him. Mm -hmm. yeah. Then on the third day, somebody say the third day. The third day. Then on the third day, Abraham lifted up his eyes and saw the place afar off. And Abraham said unto his young men, abide here yeah. with the ass. Turn to somebody and tell them, you're going to have to leave some stuff behind. And I and the lad will go yonder and worship and come again unto you. Okay. And Abraham took the wood of the burnt offering and he laid it upon Isaac his son. 
And he took the fire in his hand, a knife. And they went both of them together. It's a key word. And Isaac spake unto Abraham his father and said, My father. And he said, Hear my, my son. And he said, Behold the fire and the wood. But where is the lamb for a burnt offering? And Abraham said, My son, God will provide himself a lamb for a burnt offering. So then went both of them together. Somebody say together. together. And they came to the place which God had told him of. And Abraham built an altar there. And laid the wood in order. How many of us know when you're working for God, do it in order? Amen. Amen. And behold, Isaac, his son, and laid him on the altar upon the wood. Amen. And Abraham stretched forth his hand and took the knife to slay his son. Amen. The angel of the Lord called unto him out of heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. Yeah. And he said, here am I. And he said, lay not thine hand upon the lad. Yeah. Neither do thou anything unto him. For now I know that thou fearest God. Yeah. Seeing thou hast not withheld thy son thy only son from me. Amen. And Abraham lifted up his eyes and looked and behold behind him a ram caught in a thicket by his thorns. And Abraham went and took the ram and offered him for a burnt offering in the stead of his son. Amen. I've read from Genesis the 22nd chapter verses 1 through 12, may God add the blessing to the reading Amen. and hearing of this anointed word. And may I today have the courage Amen. to preach it. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Amen. We thank you for your patience in the reading Amen. of the scripture. If you would today, again, we will attempt to be as brief as possible. But if you will pray with me and pray for me just for a few moments, I would that we would live from this text and consider, amen, the theme, the thought, the topic, the next level. Amen. Amen. I, want to talk, I want to encourage somebody uh, today very briefly, and I want to share from the theme, the thought, the topic, the next level. Amen. Turn to somebody and look at them and tell them there is a next level. There is a next Amen. Level. Come on, do your hand like this. Say, there is a next level. There is a next level. Come on, everybody in the house, you ain't exercised all week. Say, there is a next level. There, there, there is. There is. There is a next level. There is a next level. Amen. Amen. How many of you believe that destiny is still in front of you? Yes. 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 Amen. That you are not, you're not on some random journey. Come on. Come on. Yes. That God is intentionally directing you someplace Amen. in your future. Amen. How many of you believe that you woke up and that you wake up every morning making choices that are taking you someplace appointed by God? Amen. You see, that morning that Abraham began one of the greatest acts of obedience in recorded history. Amen. Over the years, he had learned many tough lessons about the importance of obeying God. Anybody today know that you are the product of God talking to you, sometimes chastising you, other times correcting you, and always encouraging you in your obedience. Amen. This time his obedience was prompt and it was complete. You see, obeying God is often a struggle because it, uh, it, it may mean giving up something we truly want to do. 
We should not expect our obedience to God to be easy or to come naturally. Yes. Nine generations of Shem's descendants. Yes. God makes a covenant with Abram. Yes. Promising to make Abram's descendants into a great nation. Amen. Turn to somebody and tell them there's promise over your life. Hagar, Ishmael, and Isaac. You see, it proves that we can be chosen and be the product of a promise and still not be perfect. Let me say that again. What you're going to discover as a reminder from this text, from this story, somebody here today, you ought to be encouraged. I want to encourage you to remind you that you can be chosen by God. Yeah. That you are the product of his promise. And don't let the devil deceive you because you're not perfect. Amen. I wish I had I wish I had some help in here. In the text, in the text, Dr. Rogers, Roddy uses the word tempt in the text. And the word tempt in the context of the text means test. Okay, okay. You see, God gave Abraham a test. Come on, come on. Not to trip him. See, see, the devil tries to convince some of us that in our tests that God is trying to trick us and he wants to see us fall. Come on. The devil is a lie. It's not to trip you and to watch you fall, but to deepen your capacity to obey God and thus developing his character. See, somebody today, God is just trying to stretch you because he wants to increase your capacity. Come on. Yeah. See, by going through the test that you're going through today, by dealing with what you're dealing with, going through the trial, God bringing you through the trial that you see. See, it is said that all of us sitting here today, watch this. L let me regress. All of us here today are in one of three positions. Come on. You're either going into a storm, you're either sitting in the midst of the storm, no matter how quiet you are, or you're either coming out of a storm. Watch this. But you need to understand, Mud, that the, that the storms of life are not meant to destroy us. The storms of life are meant to stretch us so that God can increase my capacity. Because somebody here, God told me to tell you today, encourage you today, to let you know that what's waiting, how many of us know that your ladder is going to be more than your former? See, somebody today, you need that, and I'm not talking about, I'm not talking about more bad stuff. I'm saying that the promise of God over your life, in your God, in your life, through your life, is so great, you can't handle it right now. Man. The gospel singer Daryl Coley. Daryl Coley used to sing a song. He said, he is preparing me. For something I can't handle, right? I wish I had some help here. Somebody needs to brag on God. Somebody needs to express your dependency and, and know that God, no matter what's going on, turn to somebody and tell them, God is preparing me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bishop, I'm going through what I'm going through because God is preparing me for something greater. What I have now does not compare with what he's going to trust me with tomorrow. And so God has to stretch me so that he can increase my capacity to handle his promise. I'm trying to help somebody. Just as fire refines ore to extract precious metals. God refines us through difficult situations. When we are tested, we can complain. By the way, some of you do. Or so you don't, so you don't, 
so you don't get it twisted. Some of us do. So let's let's make it include. Some of us do. Turn to somebody, look at them, and point and say, "You too." So true. So true. So true. Or we can try and see how God is stretching us to develop our character. You see, Abraham and Isaac traveled 50 to 60 miles from Bathsheba to Mount Moriah in about three days. This was a very difficult time for Abraham, who was on his way to sacrifice his beloved son. What do you do? Watch this. Dad, what do you do when it seems like God is an Indian giver? Man. You bless me with something and then you take it back. Oh, All right, now, make it I'm trying to help somebody. You give me something and then you ask for it back. You reveal the promise and then you close the door on the promise. What do you do when it seems like God is the Indian giver? Why did God ask Abraham to perform a human sacrifice. You see, it was he the nations that practiced human sacrifice, but God commanded this as a, he, he, he saw it and condemned it as a terrible sin in Leviticus 20 verses 1 through 5. Write that down, Leviticus, amen. In Leviticus 20 verses 1 through 5. God did not want Isaac to die. But he wanted Abraham to sacrifice Isaac in his heart so that it would be clear that Abraham loved God more than he loved his promised long awaited son. See what happens sometimes. Watch this. Dr. Roger, what happens sometimes is that when God blesses us, when God gives us the promise, Sean, when God releases the blessing to me, what happens is I fall in love with the blessing. I fall in love with the gift. I fall in love with the promise. And I forget about the one who gave it to me. Listen to what I'm saying. It's easy to fall in love with what God promises to us. And, and, and here's, here's the thing that we need, need to know. And it stretches the whole gamut. And the ability is scan, it scans it. So, so God gives you that job, gives you that career. You, you studied and you, and you sacrificed and you labor and you get that career. Amen. That, that job opportunity, that door opens and you walk through it. And then all of a sudden, God becomes secondary. Wow. Just so, so I don't show up at Bible study like I used to. I'm not faithful to the ministry like I used to. Come on. Come on. I don't serve with the same consistency. I, I wish somebody helped me. And it's everything from, oh, I got to work overtime. All of a sudden, this meeting or this thing becomes more than doing what God called you to do. And so God wanted to see, watch this, God wanted to see First of all, could Abraham sacrifice his son in his heart? Somebody today, God is reading your mail. If don't nobody else know, God is reading your mail right now and he's looking at your heart. Why do I know that? Because in the word of God, it declares, and it ain't on the tablet, but it's in my heart. The word of God declares this. He said, with their lips... Since with their lips they do honor me, he said, but their hearts. <laughs> See, God is reading your mail today. He said, yeah, you're talking good. He said, but when I read your heart, your heart tells a whole nother narrative. Let's walk through some points today. 
write these down. I don't want you to miss them. Now, I'm, I'm at home, but I'm away from home, but I'm at home. And so we don't, we don't just talk just to talk. Write it down. Get your, get your phone, put it in your notes. Take something out, write it down, whatever you need to do. I'm, I don't want you to miss these points and scriptures because I want you to be able to go back. Because I'm not ashamed of somebody to check my math. Bria, I don't, I don't do math good, but I'm not ashamed. I'm not scared of somebody checking my math. Okay. I wish somebody hear me. Okay. Let's go. Number one. Being called to the next level will cost you something. Yeah. The first thing that God told me to tell somebody today or remind somebody today that, that being called to the next level will cost you something. Turn to somebody and say, it's going to cost you something. In verse number two of our text, look at what it said. It said, and he said, take now thy son, thy only son Isaac, whom thou lovest, and give thee, get thee into the land of Moriah, and offer him there as a burnt offering upon one of the mountains, which I will tell thee. If you're going to get to the next level, it's going to cost you something. Make no mistakes about it. Abraham had received the promise of God. Abraham had been blessed of God. We know the story. He told Abram and Sarah, he said, you're going to have a son. How is that possible? We are older than dirt. Y'all yes. Yes. ain't saying nothing to me. How is that even possible? We're, we're well of age. How is that even possible, God? But how many of us know that we're men, but we're God all things? Are you hearing me? And then, then they made a mistake and they got in a hurry. Anybody ever been in a hurry? You didn't want to fully wait on God? And you say, God, you know what? You're just taking a little long. Too much, yeah. That's it. Yeah. And I'm not trying to tell you how to do your business, yeah. but I, maybe you just need some help. Anybody ever tried to help God a little? Yeah. I'm not saying you're not God. I'm just saying everybody need help every now and then. Yeah, Lord. And so then we want to help God, and then we make things more complicated. Yeah, sir. And then what happens is when you try and help God, you end up with something you didn't want. Yeah, it is. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Write down Luke, the 12th chapter. Luke, the 12th chapter, verse number 48. And I'm going to read, Bishop, the D portion of that text. Luke 12 and 48. Look at what, uh, 48D, look at what he said. He said, for unto whomsoever much is given, Come on. of him shall be much required. Okay. And to whom men have committed much, of him, they will ask the more. Don't you fool yourself. We had a good talk, but we need to understand more means more. Y'all ain't saying nothing to me. Yeah, I heard him clear. He said more means more. And so we, we get excited because we say, oh, listen, God is opening up this door. God is making a way. And God said, now, when you walk through the door, I want you to understand that on the other side is more. He said, to whom much is given, much is required. Number two, write it down. Number two. Number two. When you choose to walk in your calling. God will allow you to see your place of destiny. See, walking in your calling is a choice. God is not going to make you do nothing, whether it's going to bless you or not. God's not going to force you. But the second point today is when you choose, somebody say, I choose. Come on, shout, I choose. When you choose to walk in your calling, secondly, God will allow you to see your place of destiny. In verse number four of our original text, look at what it said. It said, then on the third day, Abraham lifted up his eyes and saw the place afar of off. Okay, okay. 
Anybody grateful today? He said, I will not hold any good thing from you. Anybody in here, a product of that, know that God loves you enough, loves us enough, that he's not trying to hide nothing from you. And everything that he promised you, everything he said he's going to do, he'll let you see it. The opportunity for the body of Christ is we got to keep our head up. Turn to somebody and tell them, lift your head up. Yeah, every now and then we got to encourage each other, even encourage ourselves. And we got to keep our head up because the enemy will try and detour us or discourage us or wait us so that our head will go down. And when your head goes down, you can't see the promise. The Bible said that Abraham saw the promise from a far way off. And so the word of God declares, Bishop, it says, amen. He said, I would not have you ignorant. And I don't understand why it is. I, 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 don't, I don't understand, uh, Ernie, why we take the word of God and the word of God always has to be applied in a negative way. And so we say, I would not have you ignorant. And so we think, oh, he's not going to allow me to miss the attack of the enemy. No, he's also telling you, I'm not going to let you miss your blessing. Amen. Amen. Turn to somebody and tell them, don't miss your blessing. Yeah, God will let you see the promise from afar off. He'll let you see your blessing from afar off. He'll let you see your, pl your place of destiny from far off. But you got to keep your head up. Come on, come on, come on. Look what well, the writer uh, said. Paul said in Philippians 3 and 14, very familiar text, we all know it. Paul said, I press towards the mark. Yeah. Uh -huh. For the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Paul goes on to say in the second letter that he wrote to the church at Corinth in Corinthians 5 and 7, write it down. 2 Corinthians 5 and 7, Paul writes these words. He said, for we walk by faith and not by what? Everybody what? Not by sight. Paul said, why do you hope for that which you see? He said, that ain't hope. Turn to somebody and say, that ain't hope. Why are you hoping for what you see? God is showing you something and you still worrying about what well, God can you do it. He yeah. said, I'm already showing it to you. God has already revealed something to you and you still praying and bugging him saying, God, can you, can God, will you? He said, I heard you the first time. I'm trying to help somebody. You're wasting time praying and seeking God. And I'm not saying prayer is wrong. Pray, my house shall be called the house of prayer. How many of us know we the house? My house shall be called the house of prayer. I'm not, I'm not, what I'm saying is you're wasting time pr praying about what he's already shown you. Instead of keeping your head up and, and making sure that you're on course and on track so that I can do what God called me to do. I get off track because I lost sight of what God said. Amen. Number three. I only got a few more. Number three. Number three, no matter what God requires of you in your calling, everybody say in your calling. No matter what God requires of you in your calling, you must speak life. You see, Dr. Rogers, in the assignment, I'm going to come under some heavy strain. In the assignment, I'm going to recognize it's going to come to me, Sean. It's going to be revealed to me plainly that in and of myself dwells no good thing. Right in the midst of the calling, right in the midst of the assignment, the enemy is going to reveal, he's going to pull the covers back to let me know that I don't even have the, I don't even have the right to be doing what it is that I'm, I'm, I'm doing. That's why, beloved, he said that we can do all things through Christ. Turn to somebody, look at him, say it's not about you. Yeah, right in the midst of the calling, right in the midst of the assignment, no matter what God requires of you in your calling, you must speak life. Somebody shout, speak life. Speak 
life. Come on, shout, speak life. life. No matter what's going on, you got to speak life. The Bible declares, Dad, that the power of death and life are in the tongue. Come on. Come on. So, my brother, no matter what I'm going through, God told me to encourage, amen, that I must be life. Amen. Mother, no matter what I see, and I'm not saying that what you see is wrong. I'm not saying that your sight is bad. I'm not saying that your understanding is bad. What I'm saying is you have the authority, in spite of what you see, to be able to see something else. The Bible said that the prophet, I'll shorten it down, the prophet, amen, had a new servant that was traveling with him. And, and when they had, when they had, 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 uh, had, had settled for the night, and the Bible said that the, that the king was trying to find him because he was now telling the people. He's trying to kill the people, and he's telling the people what to do, and they move him before he can get a chance to get to him. And how many of us know that when the Holy Ghost speak? Yeah. He'll always help you be one step ahead of the enemy. And so the Bible said that the king found out that the prophet, the man of God, was instructing God's people on keeping them one step ahead. And he could not do them. So, so he said, find him. Because how many of us know if he finds you, he can get to them. I'm talking to some parents today. Can I talk to some parents for a minute? God told me to tell you, if he can get to you, he can get to them. And so the Bible said, amen, that the man of God rose up early, but, but his servant woke up before he did. And he walked out of the tent. And the Bible said that when he walked out of the tent, he saw that they were surrounded on every side by the army. Amen. And Lord, he panicked. Amen. He panicked and he went in and he told the prophet, he said, we are surrounded on every side. Surely we're getting ready to die. And how many of us will look at our circumstance and we will surrender to our circumstance and know and forget the fact that God made a way the last time? Wow. Tell somebody and tell them it's the same God. Same Come on, the Bible said with two or three touch agree. Tell somebody and tell them it's the same God. Same yeah, we got to understand it's the same God. He said, surely we're getting ready to die. Uh -huh. yeah. That's what it like. When you know who you are in God. Amen. Amen. Somebody should have shouted right Amen. there. Amen. When you know who you are in God, Amen. you're not concerned about what it looks like. Amen. Mother, when you, when you know who you are in God, you're not concerned about what somebody else see or even what you see. The Bible said that the prophet, was it? The prophet came out and he didn't pray, oh Lord, I need you to help me to fight this army. He didn't pray, God, I, I need you to, to deliver us. God, I need you to help us to be able to win this battle. He didn't pray none of that. He said, open his eyes. Man, man, come on. Open his eyes. Let me Somebody here today, God told me to tell you, just pray for him. Yes. They can't see what you see. You pray for them. Don't pray about what they're talking about. Don't pray about what they're afraid of. Don't pray about what they're dealing with. You pray for them and you intercede and you say, God, open their eyes. Because what God will do, God will not change the circumstance until your eyes are open. And the Bible said that God answered the prayer of the prophet. And the Bible said that he opened the servant's eye. And the Bible said that when he saw and knew, the Bible said there was an army behind the army. Y'all ain't saying nothing to me today. In verse number five, look at, look, let's go back to it. Good God. And look at the text, verse number five in the original text. Look at what. Because no matter what, you must speak. Somebody shout, you must be life. In verse number five, look and say, it said, and Abraham said unto his young men, abide here with the ass. Like I told you, when you're on your journey, when you're on, when you're on your way to destiny, when you're on your way to your promise, you're going to have to leave some stuff behind. 
Turn to somebody and tell them, I'm leaving it behind. Come on, tell them like you would tell them, I'm leaving it behind. Yeah, whatever it is you need to leave behind, there comes a point, if you're going to the next level, at some point in time, mud, you got to leave some stuff behind. And so verse number five, he says, abide here with the asses. Watch this. And look what he said. He said, and I and the lad will go yonder and worship and come again to you. Yes. Abraham, watch yes. this. Watch this. Don't miss this. Yes. 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 Abraham was told by God himself, go, I'll show you a place, sacrifice your son. Yes. Is that what he was told? Yes. Yes. Beverly, God told him that. But in spite of what God told him, the Bible said out of obedience, watch this, because this is rich. If you miss this nugget, God help you. You need to understand that the key to your promise is worship. <laughs> the key to your promise is worship. The Bible said, watch this, the Bible said God clearly told him, I'm going to show you a place and I want you to sacrifice your son. And the Bible said that when Abraham arrived at the place to go to the next level, before he went to the next level, the Bible said he worshiped. Yeah, somebody today, God is trying to, God is trying to encourage you that, that before, you, before you get to the next level, I just want a little glory. Watch this, watch this, because it's easy, it's easy to praise God after God works. It's easy to bless God after God has made a way. It's easy to God after you've been here. It's easy to do all that. But I want to know, is there anybody who can bless God before you arrive? Is there anybody that can give glory before you see your healing? Is there anybody that can give God glory before you get the promise? Is there anybody before you arrive at destiny, can you give God And so, and so it says that Abraham worshiped God. Yes. By he worshiped God. Yes. He blessed God. Yes. And he wasn't, Sean, he hadn't even gone to the next level yet. He was still, he was still on his way. Turn to somebody and tell him, I'm still on my way. On my way. Yeah, yeah, he was still, when he was still on his way, but yet he was praising God. He had not arrived, Billy Billy was still praising God. And I got some news for you. I got news for you. When you leave some stuff behind, it'll make you praise God. Hey, Mud, the old, the old saints, Mud, the old saints used to sing a song. And, and I think it was something like this. It said, I feel better. Y'all ain't saying nothing to me. The songwriter said, I feel better. So much better since I lay. Anybody feel better? I, 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 I dare you just to give God a little glory. He said, I feel better since I laid the thing that was holding me, I laid it down. The thing that was blocking my way, I laid it down. That person that was hindering me, I laid it down. That relationship that was blocking my view, I laid it down. That job, I laid it down. Somebody shout, I laid it down. And I feel better. In Romans, the fourth chapter, verse number 17. Paul said, as it is written, I have been, I have made thee a father of many nations before him whom he believed, even God, who quickeneth the dead and calleth those things which be not as though they were. Not me, but God. We misinterpreted this text for years. Yeah. Not me speaking those things, but God speaking those things yeah. which cannot be. How many of us know God can call things out of your life, into your life, and there's no way that it was no... Turn to somebody and say it was nobody but God. Nobody but God. That's it. That's it. Proverbs 18 and 21. 
Solomon says, again, I quoted it earlier, but I'll repeat it now. He said, death and life are in the power of the tongue. Yes. And they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. When I choose to speak life and no longer death, I get to eat stuff I didn't have on my table before. Yeah. Number five. I only got two more. Number five. Matter of fact, let me back up. I'm sorry. Number four. Forgive me. Thank you, Jesus. Number four. To operate at the next level, it will require total trust and dependency on God. Number four, to operate at the next level, it will require total trust and dependency on God. Somebody shout, I trust God. I trust God. Come on, shout, I trust God. In verse number eight, look at what it says. In verse number eight of our original text, and Abraham said, my son, God will provide himself a lamb for a burnt offering. The heart of that scripture, verse number eight is God will provide. Somebody shout, God will provide. God will provide. See, at the next level, amen, it requires me to have a total trust and dependency that God will, God will provide. And here's the thing, watch this. Beverly, when I arrive, I may not even see what God has promised for me. Amen. So I'm telling you, sometimes you, you, you'll arrive at your place of destiny, you'll arrive at your place of purpose, and Billy, what God has in store for you. And how many of us trust the Word of God? The Word of God says, eyes have not seen. Somebody should have shouted right there. Let me try that again because y'all just miss that all together. I said the word of God declares eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, neither has it entered in the heart of God. When you get to the next level, you won't be able to see everything that God has for you. You can't even see it all yet. You won't be able to see it all yet. But that don't mean that it's not there. You just can't see it. Everybody shout yet. Yeah. Come on, shout yet. Yeah. Yeah. Watch this. In Psalms 31 and 14, the psalmist wrote these words. He said, but I trust in thee, O Lord. I said, thou art my God. Sometimes you just have to make a definitive decision. Brandon, you got to make a definitive decision that I'm going to trust God. You are God. And how many of us remember what the Hebrew boy said? The Hebrew boy said, even if you don't do it, you still God. I should have been talking to half the room there. Anybody, anybody got the testimony in your spirit like the Hebrew boy? God, even if you don't work it out, you still God. Somebody shout, he's still God. Come on, shout, he's still God. You may not do it the way I want you to do it, but you're still God. It may not happen the way I thought it was going to happen, but you're still God. By the way, you may not give me my way. I just thought I'd throw that in there because sometimes, sometimes we, sometimes as his children, we just want our way. I'm not even saying it's right, God. I just want my way this time. Anybody ever had that conversation with God? I'm not saying it's right, but I'm just saying this time I just want my way. Turn to somebody, turn to, turn to somebody and say, that's all right, it's all right. Yeah, tell them it's all right. You know, we children, that's the way children, you know, they are every now. All of us been a child at one point in time. Can we stop getting ice cream cone? I ain't going to tell on you, Lauren. I ain't going to tell. I want y'all to know I ain't going to tell on Lauren. I ain't going to do it. Turn to somebody and say, he ain't going to do it. He ain't going to do it. Look at what, the, look at what Solomon said in, in, in Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 from Mary text. We know I only got two more. Stay with me. In Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, look at what it says. It says, trust in the Lord with all thy heart. And lean not to thine own understanding. 
in all your ways acknowledge him and he shall direct thy path. Number five, I only got two more. Come on, let's go. Number five. Number five, to operate at the next level. Everybody shout the next level. Come on, shout the next level. To operate at the next level, it will require sacrifice and worship. To operate at the next level, it will require, Dennis, sacrifice and worship. In verse number nine, look at what it says. And they came to the place which God had told him of. And Abraham built an altar there. Now, you need to understand the importance of the altar. The altar is the place. It is the place that is appointed for sacrifice. And the, and the sacrifice is my worship unto God. And so the Bible said that when, when Abram had reached his place of destiny, that he had made it up in his heart. Turn to somebody and say it's a heart thing. He had made it up in his heart that he was going to do what God asked him to do. And that was to sacrifice. And why would he sacrifice his only son? Because he believed that his sacrifice was worship unto God. Wow. What are you saying, Bishop? I'm saying to somebody today that what you give up is just worship to God. That what you lose is just worship to God. That what goes away was really just for the purpose of worship to God. Turn to somebody and tell them, I worship you. Come on, tell God, I worship you. Yeah, you lost it, but God said it was just worship. Yeah, it slipped away, but it was just worship. Yes, it's not with you any longer, but God said it was just, it was just worship. And so the Bible says, if watch this. The psalmist said in Psalms 34 and 1, stanza number 1, he said, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. Now, Abram blessed God by just starting out. See, for somebody today, the enemy wants you to miss that it, it, took, it took boldness just to step out. He don't, want you to, he don't want you to get that. But I came to encourage you today. No, you may not have arrived yet. No, you may, you may not have what God promised you. But God said he was pleased just by the fact that you stepped. Y'all ain't saying nothing to me today. He said just the fact that you stepped out. He said, I, he said, I was blessed just by the fact that you stepped out. And then you didn't give up. You kept on going. And you were wise enough to know that at some point in time, you got to leave some stuff behind. He said, I want you to know you bless me. Watch this. And then he said, Dennis, when you arrived at destiny, and, and even though you couldn't see everything that I had for you, you didn't get discouraged. <laughs> he said you didn't get discouraged he said even when you arrived and, and, and you couldn't see everything that I had promised you you couldn't see everything that I was doing he said you did not get discouraged you kept pressing anyway watch this last point and we're done The next level is an answered prayer and a fulfilled promise. Everybody shout the next level. Come on, shout the next level. The next level is an answered prayer and a fulfilled promise. In verse number 13, as we close, Abraham lifted up his eyes and he looked and behind him a ram caught in a thicket by his thorns. And Abraham went and took the ram and he offered him up as a burnt offering in the stead of his son. Somebody here today, God said your next level is an answer prayer and a fulfilled promise. When you arrive, your arrival is the fact that God answered your prayers. 
The very fact that you were able to make it to your place of destiny, no matter what it looks like, no matter what's happening when you arrive, you ought to give God praise that you made it. The song, listen, the Bible said, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Somebody needs to be grateful to God today. You made it back one more time. Let us be real today. Those children down in Texas, they ain't going to church no more. Those parents who lost their children are broken and beaten and discouraged by the realities of losing a loved one, a child. No parent wants to lose their child. But thanks be to God, the sun will shine again. And the mere fact that God woke you up one more time, you ought to give God praise. I think Paul said it best as I close. Paul said in Philippians 4 and 19, he said, but my God shall supply all of your needs according to his riches and glory. Somebody here today, God sent me to tell you that the journey may be long. The songwriter said, encourage my soul and let us journey on for the night is long. And I am far from home. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But he said, thanks be to God yes. from whom all blessings flow. Yeah, thank you, Lord. And then he ended by saying the storm yeah. is passing over. Yeah. Is anybody here today who can tell the devil this too shall pass? Yeah. Amen. Amen. Is there anybody here today that can declare for yourself, don't wait for somebody to tell your story. I need somebody to tell God for yourself, this too shall pass. I may not be at my place of promise, but this too shall pass. I may not have possession of the promise, but this too shall pass. I can't see it, but this too shall pass. Somebody ought to give God praise today. This too shall pass. The Bible said that Abraham arrived at his place of promise and the Bible said that now came the critical time and now God is telling somebody today, now here's where the rubber meets the road. You took me at my word. You stepped out on my word. You stayed faithful on the journey, but now is the time of decision. Will you take the last step that I ask you to take? The Bible said that Abraham was now forced. He had a knife in one hand, his son in the other hand, and the Bible said that he raised up the knife but somebody here God said as soon as you resolve in your heart that if I got to lose everything God I can't lose you somebody today God said when you resolve in your heart if I lose my husband if I lose my wife if I lose my family if I lose my health if I lose my wealth I can't lose you God somebody today God is saying can you resolve in your heart that if I lose everything Thing. I cannot lose God. Man. Man. The Bible said that Abraham went to sacrifice his son. Man. And the Bible said that he heard a voice from heaven, do your son no harm. Yes. 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 He said, I know now. Yes. 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 And Beverly, I don't know. I don't know about anybody else. In other words, what God was saying was well done. Amen. Yes. Amen. That's all I want to hear is well done. Good and faithful servant. Somebody here, I'm trying to tell you what the solution is. Be willing to sacrifice it all. Be willing to lose it all that God will get glory. And watch what God will do. Just I believe the songwriter said that he's on time God. Just in the nick of time. He said, do him no harm. He said, everything I promise you is right behind you. See, when you leave some stuff behind, don't think that God ain't working behind you. You might not be able to see what he's doing, but he said, what you left behind he said, you left it behind as a remnant so I can work with it. God's going to work with the very thing that you left behind, and he's going to prepare it so that when you arrive at your place of promise, he's going to give it back to you. Watch it. The Bible declares 
He said, if you lose your life for my sake, he said, you'll find it again. Every head bowed in this place. Father, we thank you for your word today. Thank you for the power of the promise. That there is a next level. Yeah. Thank you for the power of the promise. That at the next level is everything that we need. Amen. Your provision. Amen. But God, thank you that at the next level, yes. your power yes. is what will work in us yes. to allow us to do your will. Yes. And all we want to do today, God, is to see you glorified. Yes. It was your son, Jesus, who said, I came not to be ministered to, yeah. but I came to minister. Yes. He said, I came not to be served, yes. but to serve, Man. to give my life as a ransom. Yes. The question today, God, is how much do we owe? Amen. Tell us today, God, how much we owe. I heard your servant Paul say, present your bodies as a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. God, you're not asking for much. You're not being unreasonable. But the moment that you hear his voice, I'm talking to somebody now. The moment that you hear his voice, harden not your heart. There may be somebody here today. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. Yeah. There may be somebody under the sound of my voice and this word is for you. There's a next level. There's something greater for you. Destiny is right out in front of you. But God wants to know, have you resolved in your heart? If you lose it all, you cannot lose God. Yeah. Yes. Amen. If that's you today, I want you to come. If that's you today and if and if God is speaking to you and if God is talking with you today and he's pleading with you and saying, I want to give you everything and more. Uh, Paul said exceeding abundantly above all that you can ask or think somebody here today. There's more for you, but to whom much is given, much is required. Will you come today? Is there one that we hear God? I don't know what it is. That's out in front of you. I don't know what it is that God is promising. I don't know what the assignment is. But the question is, will you tell God yes? God bless you. That's it. Come on. Will you tell God yes? Will you tell God yes, God? I will give you all. I will hold nothing back from you, God, because I believe by faith you won't hold anything back from me. The Bible said that Jesus came. 33 generations, healed the sick, raised the dead, gave sight to the blind. We know all the miracles, but the greatest miracle of them all is that he sacrificed his life. One writer said it was the propitiation or the payment. It was a ransom. It was something given for a debt he did not owe. But a debt that we could never pay. So my question to somebody is today, are you grateful? And we can talk about how we love God. We sing the song from the time we were kids. Oh, how I love Jesus because he first loved me. If you really love God, love is an action word. You know God is speaking to you. You know God is trying to confirm his promise. There's more for you. But to whom much is given, much is required. It it requires you. He said, if you deny me in the face of man. Amen. It don't have to mean that you're a sinner. It don't have to mean that you're on your way to hell. But the question is, do you believe that there's something more? Is destiny still out in front of you? And if that is the case, then you ought to get up from your seat. You ought to come down here today and we ought to be able to touch and agree on the promise. So I have to mean that you're a sinner. The question is, do you believe that there's more for you? And will you come and Will you come and take hold of, will you come and possess 
what God has for you. Every head bowed, every eye closed. Father, we pray today for those who have come. Amen. And God, we celebrate with all of heaven who are celebrating their arrival at their place of destiny. I believe by faith, God, that this word was destined Amen. from the beginning of time. I believe that yes. this yes. divine moment was set aside from the yes. beginning of time. Yes. This time in which they would meet you and you can meet them to release them now into this next level, this next season, this next assignment. And so, God, I stand in agreement with the work that you're doing. I, I stand in agreement, God, with your selection. You don't need my possession, uh, my permission. But, God, I'm grateful today that you said that you chose not they chose you. Man. Man. And so God, we celebrate your selection today. Man. And we say thank you. thank you. But God, we know that on the backside of this, that there's still more. Yeah. Man. That there's more work to do. That there's still more of the journey. So God, I pray for strength. I pray for their faith. You, that their faith fail not. Yeah. I pray, God, that they will surrender consistently to your will. And thank you for not only the sacrifice of the blood and thank you not only for the death of your son, but thank you for the promise that he got up on the third day with all power. And God, I declare today that there's a divine transference. And God, they are more than conquerors, God. That, that, that just like they got up today and just like they stood up to declare and they allowed you to stand up inside of them today. God, I declare whatever comes on the backside of the day that they will continue to stand up. Man. That it's a fixed fight. And that they will not be defeated. Man. That according to your word that they can do all things through you. Yes. We love you today, Master. Yes. Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom. And the power and the glory forever. Let all of God's people say, Amen. Amen. Come on, give God a hand, pray. Come on. Allow me to take time to uh, show uh, gratitude and appreciation to the leadership of the Church Living God in the Great Northwest, uh, to my church chairman, uh, Deacon Morris Legrand, and to all of my board members. Amen. Uh, to all of our ministry leaders who serve and sacrifice so uh, faithfully and who have embraced the vision uh, in the great Northwest. Amen. Yes. To, yes. Uh, to my beautiful wife, Lady Audrey, uh, today. Amen. Uh, to our children, uh, to the mothers of our ministry, to all of those who we have the privilege of serving and serving with. To all of hey, you. bye, uh, Bishop, my brother. Uh, listen, I wanted to take a moment uh, just to tell you personally, thank you. Uh, this time is set aside to recognize uh, great leaders, our leaders. Uh, believe it or not, you are my leader. Uh, you're my leader so many different ways, not only in your gifting and ministry, uh, not only in your now uh, retired legacy of leadership within the city, uh, San Bernardino, uh, but just uh, just for you as just a man of God being an example for me. Uh, you know how much I love you, how much I appreciate you. Uh, thank you for being a godly example of servant leadership. And so this on, on your uh, celebration, your anniversary to you and to Lady Sean on behalf of me and Lady Audrey, our family, which by the way is your extended family, we just wanted to tell you thank you, we love you, and Godspeed. Bishop Dowdy, it's been an amazing journey. I've known you for almost 12 years now. It's been 2010. And at that time when you met, we talked, I was going through, I was a mess, going through divorce, all kinds of stuff, just, just crazy stuff. But you helped me. But you helped me by pointing me to God and letting God do everything I needed to have happen to me. Truly, 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 I appreciate you. I appreciate God even more for, for him putting you in my life because I needed someone, I needed direction, and you gave me that direction. So 
great appreciation for you today. I thank God again for just the opportunity to be here and serve. Thanks. Hello, uh, shall I say Bishop Dowdy or Brother Bishop Dowdy and to my lovely sister LaShawn. We love you so much. You guys are so awesome and so incredible. Another year, so many years that we can't even remember how many years. But what matters most is that we appreciate all that you do for us and we're gonna continue to stand behind and support you for many, many, many more years. So God bless you and may you be blessed throughout the years. Your little sis, Gwen. I get excited this week uh, because we always hear a good word of God from Bishop White. But Bishop Dowdy, what I like most about this is you get to be uh, uh, contained, uh, detained uh, for the moment. And I enjoy watching you uh, when we say how much we love you and appreciate all your efforts that you do and the direction that you give us here at the Church of the Living God, Temple 208. So thank you again, and I, and I really like these moments because it's my chance to really get back at you on a few things. But thank you. God bless. So it is once again, oh God, that I come today in the spirit of humility, humbled by the privilege of being able to meet you once again in the holies of holies. It is at this time, God, that I decrease to allow your presence and your power to increase in this place. Man. In this season, God, we need a word from you. Right. A time of turmoil, and treacherous behavior. Yeah. Brokenness and bewilderness by tragedies that yes. strike even at the lowest level. Yes, yes, yes. But by faith, God, we believe that you are still in charge. Man. So now, God, in this pitching moment, we ask that you will speak to our hearts and our minds. Please, God. Encourage these great leaders as well as those who are on the sound of my voice. Yes, Lord. So now, masters, I hide behind the cross, and as I cling therein, once again, I beseech you that the words of my mouth yeah. and the meditation of my heart be acceptable yes. only in thy sight. Yes. O oh Lord, my strength yes. and my redeemer. Yes. Let the people of God say amen. 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 And amen. Amen. Come on, we Thanks for watching. Be blessed by sharing this message. Support our ministry by following us on all social media platforms, like YouTube. Hit the subscribe and like buttons. Pinterest, Facebook, and Instagram. Your generous giving allows the church to grow, which supports our efforts in providing the needed services for the community. There are a variety of ways for you to continue your giving. Go to the links in the description below, and God bless.